Hey guys, Paul here, Styrene Relics, and there's been a question floating around about your oldest kit and your coolest kit. Um, so this used to hold a whole bunch of my older kits, and I've taken a bunch down. Uh, this is an older 1930 monogram kit. Uh, that's uh, an original uh, garbage truck box. Uh, that's an original George Barris. That's uh, one of the originals before they repopped it. Uh, parts box, Tom Daniels. These were all the Ravel kits that uh, the doors open and everything. Um, the 57 and pa or, uh, Bel Air wagon, Nomad wagons. I've got three of those. The other one's in the in one of the closets here. And uh, that's uh, that's an 80s kit. Uh, I forget when that one was made, doesn't matter. But these are, let's see, that's all the newer stuff. I don't see anything older in there. Well, the uh, 40 Ford panel, that's an older kit. Uh, that's complete. I got that uh, in a swap meet here not too long ago. But anyways, let me uh, spin around back over here. Uh, these are kits I didn't want to get on. And a bunch of them in the closet I didn't want to get out. And I'm sorry I'm bouncing this around. Uh, the Indy cars are MPC kits and AMT kits. Um, they're originals. Uh, the Dan Gurney's and Old Snyder Eagle and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they're, they're uh, I don't know, mid-60s, uh, late early 70s, I think. Uh, the Henry J up there, that's not one of the first one it's one of the first ones it's not the original i don't believe uh the vending machine that is an original uh somebody started that one i'm trying to decide if i want to try and build that or not uh, i don't have the decals to it the outcast that one is an original uh I, and i have all the decals for it it's a good one so i am going to do that uh the tom daniels that's that's an original um, well, let's see, Wild Willie Borsch, uh, that's not that old, but I've got two or three of those kicking around. Uh, let's see, anyway, what I did want to show you was some of the older stuff. So let's start at the newest of my older stuff. So here's, here's my 70s pile, uh, this is a Dirk Uber wagon. When you, uh, you could buy these uh, as a, a club, you join a club and they come in the mail. And uh, I don't really care if it's not in one of the cool boxes. I just like to build them. So this, these were one of my grail kits. So uh, this one, 1973. So that's kind of neat. And the other one, this was the... T-bone steak, same type of thing. Uh, it was a little bit earlier. I, later, I think this was. Uh, I'm thinking this was 80, if it, if it wasn't in the 70s. I, again, this one was part of that group too. Uh, late 70s, 80s, somewhere around there. That's not that old. This one here is one of the originals. Um, Now I don't see it, but I know it's got to be in the 70s. Yep, 1970. So this is kind of cool. Uh, here's one, the old Woodstock. This one's got to be 70s as well. But it must be on the other side. 74. So, yeah, kind of cool. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. These are kind of neat. This is, uh, this is one that my brother got a long time ago, the orange crate. This is one of the originals. You can see that the box is a lot shorter than the newer ones. And the newer one actually opened up like, uh, you know, it, it flipped open. Uh, this one is 1971. That, that's a 1971 kit. This one's kind of cool to me. Um, it's a Yamaha 250MX. 
This was when I was riding all the time. We were on our bikes every single day. Uh, this is a 1972 kit. And it's all there. Uh, I bought this at a flea market uh, a while back, a few years ago. I've been wanting to build it. The head's missing on it, or the jug. So I, uh, it's easy enough to make. I mean, it's all flat stock, you know, and then drill a hole for a spark plug. You know what would be cool to go with this? Is if somebody had like a Malcolm Smith Husqvarna kit and have these two set side by side, that would be cool, wouldn't it? So I got to find somebody that's got one of those. That would be really cool. Because Malcolm Smith, he was the man. That, that dude could ride anywhere. I shouldn't say stuff like that. Because <laughs> then I'm thinking the price goes up. All right. Uh, well, I don't see a, price, a, a date on it, but I thought I did at one time. This one's kind of cool because this was actually a, a TV show. And uh, they did they took the Stutz Bearcat and it had, you know, Gatling guns and stuff like that on it. And I think I looked this one up and it's not going to let me open the box. But this one is a mid-70s. Three or four. Sounds right. And here's the Thomas Flyer. Um, this one is... If not an original, sorry guys, 1976. This one's kind of cool. Um, let me open this up and show you the instructions on this. If it's the one I'm thinking of. Nope, it's not. But it's, the instructions are kind of neat. But yeah, 76 on this one. Uh, and it's it's all good. The... Uh, Decals, decals, whatever you guys want to call them, they're good. So, I mean, nice and crisp on those. So I'll be, uh, I'll be building this one too. Uh, I just got to get a good idea when I want to do it, and I'll build both of those together. That'd be really neat. Uh, my Chris Cartel build. That's uh, you guys saw me open this up. It was still in the bags. And I opened it up not too long ago, and uh, I put a tag in there, I thought, of the date it was made. And it's not out here. But anyways, this is uh, mid-70s, I can tell you that. This is a mid-70s build. So, like I say, I'm like... Just like Sean, these bad boys were meant to be built, so they're gonna, if I can, if I live long enough, we'll, uh, we'll be building these bad things. 1960s. This is the T-Bird. Um, set that one down, open it up. You can see it's still there, everything's there. The uh, decal sheet's still in there, still good. I got this one from my brother-in-law years ago. And I can tell you because I put a tag in it. 1965 was when this one came out. So pretty cool stuff, guys. Let me drop this on the floor. I don't see a price tag on anything, so pretty cool, pretty cool. Here's another one. They repopped this one. Looks like the same box art and everything, but this one is an original. And it's pretty neat. Uh, I've got some different decals in here with it. This one needs uh, needs to have some work done. There was he was going to do a custom with it, and have the uh, have the uh, rear fenders cut just like the front. So I may end up doing something there and putting like skirts on it. This is a 1961 kit because it's a 1961 Ford Fairlane or a Ford Galaxy. Uh, you guys have seen this one. I showed it not too long ago. It's a 1968 kit. Uh, that's that Mark, Mark II. 
that's kind of neat. Uh, my bed bug, that is pretty cool. Let me throw it on the floor. Well, let me pick it up real quick because uh, it's kind of neat. Uh, well, nineteen sixty nine, sixty nine kit, thirty one sedan. Again, these are the shorter boxes from Ravel and it is 1969 as well this one's kind of cool because the doors and everything open on it it's the sedan delivery so that'd be kind of neat I don't think it comes with the V8 it's a little yeah that's got that little four banger in it with the stuff so here's another one 61 hardtop this one needs an interior but it's a actual 1961. It's all in there, nice and crisp. It needs an interior. The he was cutting the bench seat out and he was going to put uh, buckets in there. So, but other than that, that's the only thing that's wrong with it. Uh, let's see. Tarantula. That's a 60s kit. Um, that's been built. 68. So that one's been built already. This one here is the Green Hornet. It is uh, 1960 copyright on it. And it's still got the old yellowed interior uh, instructions. All of it's there. Still most of it's on the trees yet. But yeah, and the decals are inside the instruction sheet. So that's kind of cool. I like that one. Uh, this one, I bought the box uh, because uh, I had the car already and I needed a box. So this one's a 1961 issue. Uh, so yeah, I've got, I've got that car. It's built. Here's one that's kind of cool. Uh, so I'm going to do something just a little different here. Because I'm shaking all over the place, you guys, and I apologize. Let me set this down. And I'll open this up for you. This is the... It's hard to see, I can tell. But it's the uh, AMT uh, 40 Ford. I believe this is the original issue. Uh, it says $1.49 on the side. Uh, the box is in really bad shape. This is a 1976 issue, so maybe it's not one of the originals, but uh, it has been built. Here's why I want I don't want to restore this one. Uh, really super cool. Let me get this in the camera here. This one's really neat. Uh, it's the decals are pulling off the body, and I want to try and. Uh, repair them the best I can with some decal set and uh, the body's never been painted and I hate to strip it because I I just really dig that look and I don't have those decals to put back on it so yeah so that one's going to be getting restored uh, maybe it was this one I was looking at I was wanting to show you the, deep, the build sheet When's the last time you saw a 44 AMT build sheet that looks like that? Kind of neat. Instruction, neat instructions, man. That's just super, super neat. So, throwing that one out. Thought you guys would like that one. Uh, IMC kits. These are mid 60s right here. Uh, this is the uh, Ford GT. This is the Mark II IMC kit. I really like those. So I've got everything. This one, I believe it was missing the wheels. And my buddy over at uh, Horton's Hot Rod Shop, he got me the wheels and tires for it. So now it's a complete kit. Uh, this one is...
1960 Revell. <clears throat> Tommy Morris. Remember I was telling you I had one of these? There she be. A non-chopped El Camino. Or a, <laughs> a Ranchero. A non-chopped 57 Ranchero kit. You cannot, I don't think you can build this one stock. I think it has to be a mild custom, at least. And why I bring his name up is because, yeah, one of those multi-bodied cars. So there you have it. I have one, and we're going to build that bad boy, I hope. <laughs> what? They, uh, they intimidate me a little bit, not going to lie. All right. Uh, some of my oldest kits. This one here is a... Let me show you this one first. You guys saw this. I built this one already uh, on that small scale build. This is a 1960 Corvette. I built this one not that long ago for the small scale. This one here is the... Uh, uh, who does this? I, I was going to say Pyro. I'm thinking it is Pyro, but I'm not sure now. But anyway, uh, this kit here is 1958 kit. I've built one already. This one here is complete inside the box. And, uh, yeah, so that one's kind of neat, 1958. My oldest kit, right here. I got a Pyro. This is 1957 kit. It's been started. It appears to be all there. Um, so it needs to be cleaned up and put back together. Uh, it actually has a lady figure to go as a driver. Um, I've got that as well. So yeah, 1958 Pyro cord. That would be my oldest one right there. Um, let's see. Let me pick you up again. <clears throat> Excuse me, so these are empty boxes that I've acquired. I bought kits over the years, and these were not what the kit I bought was not inside these boxes, they were different. Different, so uh, throw that one on the floor. There's a little Lindbergh job. I bought that one, that was full of chrome parts, so I, I bought them for the old, old uh, chrome parts. Uh, the box was just a bonus. Pick this one back up. This is a Thunderbird, 1960 Thunderbird. But like I say, it was something else in it when I got it. Uh, this is another one. You've seen this one. I showed you it had 97 cents new. Uh, I don't remember what came in this one. It was, I do too. This actually had the 32 in it. It was built. Um, it was a, a show rod. That's that green and white one that I restored. I've got two of these. That's uh, Glenn's favorite kit right there. And I've got two of these. These are both originals. Uh, this one is full of chrome, and this one's full of parts. Uh, I had enough to build, I believe, at least one one of these dragsters. I think this one, and then I can all I can get enough to build this one. I think out of these two boxes yet, but they're. Mostly just uh, parts in this one. And then uh, Don Piggott, your favorite kit. I've got two of these bad boys. And uh, one of them I've redone as the Mod Rod. And uh, I've got another one that I can build yet out of this. And, uh, and it, it's going to be done here real soon. And uh, this one here... Uh, has got a major custom build that he, he was uh, started. So it's from my brother in or son, or, pff, my brother in law. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I ended up with that. So I'm going to try and restore his custom job. Uh, this is a really cool box. Uh, it had a different car in it. I think it had a Bonneville in it. Love that box art on that. Uh, this one here is a Bonneville. Uh, they, they just re-released this one, but this is the small box right here. Uh, it as well had a different car in it when I bought it. And then my favorite uh, hobby shop was closing up, 
And the last day he, I was in there, uh, he says, hey, Paul, you know, I got these two boxes. And uh, if you want them, you can have them. So, yeah, I got a nice, nice little Porsche box there. Uh, it's got a little blue boogers on it, but uh, that's all right. So I got a little bit of box art. He did tell me on this one, though, uh, this box has got a lot of uh, moisture damage and uh, on it. But uh, this one was kind of special, he said, because uh, it's the motorized box. And he said you can find the regular box all day, but you just can't find the motorized box. So I thought that was kind of cool. You didn't have to do that, but he did. That was kind of really neat. Really enjoyed that. Uh, another one, a uh, little Revell job. Um, this says, uh, yeah, I don't know what year this one is. But anyway, nice little box. Uh, it's full of parts, is what it is, decals and parts. So, come back to here. Uh, these are boxes. I bought a, a guy's uh, collection that he had, and I, and I bought it, and these are two of the old boxes that he had. Uh, so I'm going to say these are definitely, you know, mid to late 70s. Um, on these kits uh, they're not what's in it they're actually different kits I've got a uh, shoot I can't even remember what's all in these two there's four kits in these they're built already this one's kind of neat uh, it's still sealed and uh, it's been around for a little bit uh, I've kind of watched it I, I hate using eBay as a guide on price but it's uh, a little pricey on the kit, still sealed too. Uh, I bought that for five bucks. So whatever I end up doing with that, it's worth it. So the coolest stuff I've got, I'm going to say I really dig that Pinto. I've got two of those. Uh, one's in the box, one's out. You guys know about my Superbird. Uh, that's been uh, plaguing me for years. I finally got it. Uh, the Mustang Johan, I built that years ago, really dig that kit, um, that's, that's a very nice kit if you guys ever get a chance to get one. Uh, the Drag Ray, that is really super cool, it's, uh, a little bit weird, uh, small bodied, you know, and stuff, but, uh, really cool kit. And the AC Accelerator, um... They kind of redid that here not too long ago, and uh, but this one is one of the originals, and why it's special to me is, you know, I'm, I'm close to Flint, and this is where the AC spark plugs were made, so the fire ring spark plug was really big around here for years and years, and anybody that's got a little age to them knows that, and so, yeah, that's kind of cool. So there's the two kits I was telling you about. Uh, they, I restored these. Uh, the guy that I bought the, uh, the, the collection from, he had built these. Uh, I just like the look of this one without the fenders, so I left them off. But yeah, it's it's got the old uh, name on the uh, of the ice cream, so it's 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 one of the originals. I uh, I kind of goofed. I sprayed this with a clear coat. And it frosted the clear on it, except for where the decal is. So it looks like somebody's wiped it off, you know. So it, it, it fits. <laughs> it's ice cream, so. Uh, yeah, so there we go, guys. That's uh, that's my, some of my oldest stuff and some of my coolest stuff. So I've got a bunch more, but I just didn't want to dig it all out. So now i got to put all this away. I do apologize for this one being quite lengthy. But, uh, yeah. So anyway, swing by again, guys, and I'll talk at you later. Bye.